Hello, um, I'm Elodie van de Noot. I'm working as a project director in HCS Pharma Company. I'm happy today to, uh, to talk to you about the use of biomimesis uh, hydroscaffold in, uh, in uh, organs and chip for toxicology and oncology research programs. HCS Pharma Company was founded in 2014. Uh, we are located in uh, near Lille in the north of France. And historically, we are providing services uh, for uh, safety and efficacy assays in high content analysis and high content screening using 2D and 3D cellular cell culture systems to our customers from the cosmetic, pharmaceutical, and nutraceutical industries. Uh, we acquired the patent of biomimesis uh, with the objective to create a full range of uh, 3D cell culture systems to answer the drug discovery needs and research needs uh, for various uh, tissues and organs of interest uh, for different uh, therapeutic areas in order to, uh, to provide the research uh, in the world with an innovative in vivo mimicking 3D cell culture technology. Um, the cell culture in 2D uh, is really different from uh, what's uh, in, the, in, the, in the real body. The, in 2D cell culture, the cells are grown as uh, monolayers uh, on, on plastic, which is uh, not physiological. Uh, in comparison, in reality, in in vivo situation, the different cell types are organized together. Uh, the extracellular matrix uh, is important. Um, I mean, the cells are embedded in this extracellular matrix, which has an important role um, in various aspects of the cell behavior, the anchorage, the migration, cell-cell communications, uh, cell differentiation, and uh, the proliferation also. And biomimesis uh, has an important role to, to take uh, in, uh, in the mimicry of the ECM. And there are also blood vessels uh, in, uh, in, uh, in tissues, uh, which help, of course, providing the cells with the nutrients, with the gases, uh, which uh, they need for, for, their, uh, for their health. Uh, and this also needs to be taken into account, uh, the continuous uh, arrival of nutrients, for example, both in healthy tissues or in, uh, like you can see on this picture, in tum tumoral um, tissues in which uh, angiogenesis has already uh, um, been, uh, been grown. Um, therefore, there is a more and more need uh, in, the, uh, in more complex models, taking into account this aspect of blood vessels, of a continuous flow of uh, nutrients, and that's why, uh, and that's where, Microfluidics are uh, now making uh, an important part in the research. As maybe a reminder, but just to, to tell you uh, about biomimesis, uh, it is based on uh, hyaluronic acid. It is a 3D cell culture system uh, in which um, hyaluronic acid is mixed with adhesion proteins or peptides and other proteins like collagens. Um, all compounds are cross-linked with ADH as a peptidic uh, cross-linker. The resulting hydrogel is not adapted for cell culture because it can degrade quickly, but uh, it is thanks to the patented process um, that we can get finally a stable hydroscaffold. I will tell you uh, why this name uh, afterwards. It is an interpenetrated network of hyaluronic acid and collagens with an elastic modulus uh, that can be um, modulated and uh, it is porous, uh, between 100 and 200 micrometers. Therefore, biomimesis is made of native ECM components, and uh, the related process makes this mat matrix stable a long time, which is an advantage also in uh, microfluidic studies, um, helping to mimic organ, healthy organs or diseased microenvironments. Uh, this is the only 3D cell culture system with a dual behavior, meaning that it is not only a hydrogel and not only a, a solid scaffold. Hence the name of hydroscaffold that we had to invent. 
you have both uh, the maintenance of the structure, thanks to the solid scaffold part, and also the swelling and cell adhesion uh, uh, behavior uh, you, for uh, the hydrogel uh, part. Because of these features, pyomimesis is adapted to uh, microfluidic, microfluidic systems because uh, the, scaffold, the solid scaffold part helps to maintain the structure a long time. It is porous, as you can see from these scanning electron microscopy pictures, uh, the surface of the matrix, or here inside. You see the hyaluronic sheets here in gray, and the collagens uh, in uh, artificially colored in, uh, in brown here. It really looks like the cellularized tissue in terms of uh, organization. And in biomimesis, the porosity is between 100 and 200 micrometers. Since it is porous, uh, of course, it allows the cells to enter and to nest within, but it also allows flow to cross it. I will uh, give you first an example of application in cancer research. These results uh, come thanks to a collaboration with Dr. Anthony Trezebré from the IEMN uh, in, the, uh, in France. The work I, I will present you now uh, was performed by Thomas Mena, who is now a PhD student in Canter Laboratory uh, in Lille. The objective was to make a tumor on chip with uh, breast cancer cells and biomimesis to mimic the uh, matric matricial microenvironment, all of which uh, would be integrated into macrofluidic systems. We have tried several ones, and I will give you uh, the, the some. Here is the microfluidic system that was uh, used for the results I will present you now. Um, the circulation medium is uh, in, in this bottle. It is aspirated through uh, the microfluidic chip uh, in which the biomimesis was cast and the cancer cells were uh, seeded. Here you can see uh, the right uh, appearance of biomimesis in the, in the chip. Here is an EBD microslide lower uncoated uh, um, system. All of uh, the system was put in the incubator and outside was this pump aspirating the medium through um, with uh, speed of 4 microliters per minute, allowing a, new, a renewal of medium twice an hour. What about the growth of breast cancer cells in the, in the chips? and in comparison also with, uh, with static conditions. Here is a biomimesis plate of 96 well plate uh, after seven days of culture. So you can see that the MCF7 cells, which are a luminal, um, a luminal breast cancer, uh, sh show a round morphology. They, they grow as small spheroids. Contrary to MTAMP231, uh, that are not growing in tight spheroids but are more spread into the matrix. Uh, you cannot see it because it is um, not autofluorescent, but the matrix is between the cells here. In blue is the X for the nuclei staining, calcine AM for the uh, live cells, and propidium iodide for the dead cells. You can see after seven days of culture, in the chip, so under dynamic culture conditions, um, the cells are finally the same. I mean, they are organized in a, in a spheroid for MCF7 cells, and MGMB231 cells are spread around uh, and inside the matrix. We could maintain the cells for 28 days in the dynamic culture, uh, in the end, showing high big, more than 500 micrometer um, of, um, of size as spheroids, and MTAMB231 um, showing again uh, cells spread around, uh, with some uh, now showing some protrusions uh, in the matrix. So biomimesis allows the cancer cell culture and the flux under dynamic culture conditions in microfluidic chips. Uh, here, the longest time point tested was 28 days. What about their characteristics? So we have done some immunostainings. I will give you the example of KI67, 
um, a protein expressed by the cells active in the in the cell cycle. MCF7 uh, in the upper part and MDMB231 in the uh, lower panel. The CHI67 percentage uh, is higher with MDMB231 cells showing a higher uh, proliferation or at least a higher activity in the cell cycle. And both of them are um, uh, expressing CD44 protein. Um, this project uh, was the first part of a longer project with a cancer laboratory uh, with the team Lucine Cancer and Drug Resistance, led by Dr. Isabel von Seningen, who is also the leader of Oncolil Institute. Uh, our objective is to go to a pancreatic adenocarcinoma model to study tumor stroma interactions using biomimesis in a, in a, in a microfluidic culture system. Uh, with the study of mechanical effects uh, on, on the tumor phenotype and on the resistance that is observed in pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Now we will uh, give you the example of application in toxicology with a meme liver on chip ANR project, um, which is a collaboration with the team of uh, Dr. Cécile Gallet from the University of Technology of Compiègne in, in France. And I will let our collaborator, Taha Messenmani, uh, showing us his uh, results uh, from, from his uh, PhD studies. I let you talk now, Taha. Hello, everyone. My name is Taha Messenmani, a PhD candidate at BMBE Lab in the University of Technology of Compiègne. And today I will present our joint publication with Arceus Pharma entitled Development of Liver on Chip Integrating a Hydrocaffold Mimicking the Liver Extracellular Matrix. The article was published in September 2020-2022 in Bioengineering Journal from NDPE and is the fruit of a collaboration between Arceus Pharma and the UTC. The article is part of a project funding from the French National Agency of Research for the creation of a biometric liver on chip platform. The platform is aimed to be used to study the xenobiotics, toxicity and metabolism in the liver. The project brings together two public institutions and two private companies. The University of Technology of Compiègne with its expertise in the organ on chip technology and its patented liver on chip microfluidic system with the SMILEY, which is a French-Japanese joint laboratory working on the vessel on chip. The two private companies are HCS Pharma, which developed a hyaluronic acid-based scaffold mimicking the tissue microenvironment, and Flugent, with, which is specialized in the commercialization of pressure controller and microfluidics devices. So the final goal of the project is to create a platform to screen the toxicity of xenobiotics, which was correlated with the increase of number of newly discovered molecules. This was confronted with the European regulations such as the REACH and the 3R, which aim to limit the use of animals in drug discovery process. Hence, there is a necessity to develop models to evaluate the safety and toxicity of drug candidates. Conventional models used to culture the cells on petri dishes in 2D conformation, but we discovered that this organization doesn't mimic the cell in vivo microenvironment. As an alternative, in this work, we are using the association between dynamic culture and the 3D organization of cells, using organon-chip technology to increase cell-cell interaction and enhance the cell functionalities. At PMB Lab from the University of Technology of Compiègne, we developed and patented a liver biochip. The biochip is composed of a bottom layer with microchannels connected to culture chambers. That's where the cells will be cultivated. The top layer consists of a culture reservoir. The two layers are bonded to form a sealed microfluidic system. At the UTC, we developed also a parallelization platform along the connection of 12 independent biochips. The whole system is then mounted on a peristaltic pump 
that will pump the culture medium from the inlet reservoir to the outlet and passing through the biochip. It was proven that the dynamic culture enhances the cell functionalities by the application of optimal shear stress on the cells and the culture medium renewal and its oxygenation. Several works has been done at the UTC using the liver on chip by working with cell lines, primary hepatocytes, and lately human pluripotent stem cells. In addition, the system was used to study the interaction between organs. To do so, the biochips are connected in serial and each biochip was hosting specific organ cell. The liver's interaction, which is the main organ involved in the xenobiotic metabolism, was studied with the intestine, the kidney, sertoli, and lately the pancreas. But all these works were realized in 2D conformation, which does not reflect the cell's organization in vivo. Lately, Boulay et al. in 2021 integrated an alginate cryogel inside the biochip, but the cells did not form 3D structures. In this project, the association between the UTC and HCS Pharma aimed to integrate biomimesis liver from HCS Pharma inside the biochip and study the potential of this model to recreate the liver functions. Biomimesis liver is HCS Pharma hydroscaffold developed especially for the liver. It is a porous hydroscaffold with pores of around 117 micrometers. It is mainly composed of hyaluronic acid and the, and the main glycosaminoglycans of the ECM and collagen type 1 and 4. The hydroscaffold is cross-linked with adipic acid dihydrazide and its elastic module is corresponding to a healthy level of around 0.6 kPa. In order to integrate the hydroscaffold inside the biochip, the biochips are fabricated at the UTC, then HCS Pharma injects, cross-link and euphilize and UV sterilize the biochips with the hydroscaffold. Before usage, the hydroscaffold is hydrated and cells are injected for long dynamic culture. In this work, we worked with the FG2C3A cell line. Compared with the conventional 2D culture, where the cells spread out and adhere on the surface, when working with the hydroscaffold integrated biochips, we observed that when working with different cell density, the cells tend to form spheroids inside the biochip. The lower the density, the smaller the spheroids are formed. On the other hand, when working with high density, we observe the formation of irregular shapes and the biochips end up clogged. We tried to follow the spheroid formation inside the biochip using the low density. The cells after 24 hours start to assemble around the ECM's adhesion sites. At this step, the biochip is stated. Then the perfusion starts and the spheroids keep forming and growing until the ninth day, when they reach a, a diameter of around 300 micrometers. Starting the 11th day, the spheroids start to fuse in the biochip, and starting the 21st day, the biochips start clogging. When looking closely to the culture chamber with SEM, at the day 11, we can see that the hydroscaffold is covering the whole biochip volume, with cells organized in 3D embedded inside the hydroscaffold. Different stains were used to analyze the structure of the spheroids. Phalloidine was used to stain the actin network and demonstrated that the spheroids were compact. The actin, when colocalized with the MRP2 for drug resistance protein, indicated a polarization of the hepatocytes, which is known to be rapidly lost when the cells are cultivated in 2D. For the biceps, for bile salt export pump, it was stained and demonstrated a well-developed bile salt network. When comparing the urea and albumin synthesis, which are the most known markers for hepatocytes, in the dynamic biochips and static petri dishes, we can see that the cells in biochip produce 10 times as much albumin as in petri dishes, while the urea production vanishes after 21 days of culture, in static condition, while it is maintained in biochips. 
To conclude, we successfully associated organ and shape with biomimesis liver hydroscaffold, which allowed the enhancement of cell functionalities in dynamic biochips compared with static petri dishes, and the upkeep of their functionalities and integrities for 21 days. We already exposed our liver model to candidate drug and we are currently studying the meta their metabolism and their toxicity. Finally, we obtained primary result on the formation of functional spheroids using the primary cells. I would like to thank every person who contributed to this work and don't hesitate to contact us for further information. And thank you for your attention. You have questions? at the end of the presentation. Um, I will just give you another view of other projects that are uh, currently ongoing using uh, microfluidic technologies. Um, currently, we are working on Micro 3D Beta project. Uh, it's a PEARL project uh, led by uh, Dr. Jean-Sébastien Anicot in Institut Pasteur de Lille, also in collaboration with Anthony Trézébré. And uh, it is uh, the work of Leonid Pliner as a PhD student at the moment. The objective is to develop a 3D dynamic macrophytic device of pancreatic beta cells and adipocytes to model uh, crosstalk be between these two tissues during type 2 diabetes development. On the left, you can see the growth of uh, biomimesis of uh, adipocytes in biomimesis adipose tissue and uh, we are working on the growth of uh, pancreatic beta cells in, ma in, uh, in, uh, in the matrix as well. Both tissues will be uh, connected through a microfluidic device. Another project uh, aims at developing a vessel on chip. Uh, this is uh, the work done in the frame of a LabCom project. Uh, this is the work of Dana Simiuk uh, as a postdoc uh, postdoctoral scientist. Uh, before it was um, initiated by uh, Juliette Cholet. Um, the idea is in fact to grow UVEX cells and to uh, provide uh, support for the um, organization of vessels. Uh, we know that we are able to, uh, to, um, to create uh, a, a channel within biomimesis itself. Um, and this work is still uh, ongoing. Um, on this, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, subject, the collaboration uh, we have also in Taiwan aim at combi combining biomimesis, biochips, but also uh, sensors uh, for different parameters um, with different uh, also um, agencies and labs in uh, in Taiwan. We hope that we can give you more uh, results and more information about uh, these projects in the near future. So the objective to make more complex models is to better mimic the in vivo situation, the in vivo organization of cells. Um, and the in vivo recapitulation helps at better predicting human outcomes, uh, at uh, unraveling the molecular and cellular mechanisms at stake in different diseases. But uh, of course, it does not come with the throughput, uh, with more complex models, uh, being um, more difficult um, to uh, to handle, to analyze, and so on. With biomimesis, you can have the high throughput with the with the 96 and the 384 well plates, uh, in which you can grow uh, spheroids or organoids, and um, it can also then be used in biochips for um, upgrading finally the these chips in the 3D organization in which you can grow organoids, uh, tumoroids, uh, whatsoever. To conclude about biomimesis, it is unique hydroscaffold reproducing the extracellular matrix in 3D, which can be used in plates, but also in other types of the vessels like biochips, if those can undergo the whole process of production of biomimesis in HGS Pharma's laboratories. Which means, if you are interested, you should tell us or send us your biochips for us to test the production process to see if it is adapted. Given its porosity, biomimesis is permissive towards the flow and does not um, impede the flow from, uh, from passing by. 
given its features, biomimesis resists to the flow a long time, contrary to other hydrogels, thus allowing to perform long-term studies, like experiments of several weeks at least. So biomimesis can upgrade your biochip models with a relevant and flow-adapted 3D circuitry system. Afterwards, we are interested in knowing which chips you are using in your research. Mm, don't forget that biomimesis can be customized in terms of composition or stiffness. Biomimesis has already been cast in these chips, EBD slides, um, uncoated ones, AEM Biotech uh, three-lane uh, chips. In this type of setting, it's interesting uh, that uh, you can um, have biomimesis in one lane, but not in others, depending on your applications or what you want to do with, uh, with your biochip. And also in Nanobio's technology, Secret SARS, which um, gathers uh, the advantage of chips together with the analysis of secreted uh, compounds, secreted cytokines. Um, last but not least, we would like to thank uh, all of our collaborators and supports, uh, without whom uh, these works uh, would not uh, would not be so. Ad and I would like to thank you for your attention, and we are now waiting for your questions.